All right, welcome to the next part of 4-5, which is finding the real zeros. Now, on page 192 of your book, there is a really good example with extremely long steps that I want you to read over. I broke it down to be a little bit more um, easier to read with these steps, which I want you to copy down as well. So first, you're gonna try to factor. Could be a quadratic form, could be grouping, you don't know. Then you're gonna graph it on your graphing calculator. So you're gonna go to y equals, you're gonna go plug it in. You're gonna go to graph. And then step three, you're gonna use the second trace and then zero to find a nice solution. What do I mean by nice solution? I mean like one or negative one, two. Any integer, anything that like is nice, easy to see, easy to read, and then finally easy to use with synthetic division. And the last step, step four, actually you don't know how long step four can go on. You might have to do synthetic division two or three times. You might do synthetic division with some factoring. There's a lot of different things that you can do here, okay? So copy these steps down. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do page 193, number six, which is what I used as an example for the rational root theorem. And then you're gonna do number five, but when you do number five, it's actually gonna be way easier than number six, all right, and it should be. Um, number six is really difficult, but number five, you can see your answers on your graphing calculator, but I want you to practice my way. So I want you to practice trying to factor, and I think you're gonna realize you can't. Uh, then I want you to graph it on your calculator, use second trace zero to find one of the zeros, just one of them, then use that zero for synthetic division until you find all of the zeros, okay? You can use your graphing calculator to check your work. Remember, they're not all gonna be nice like number five. Most of them are gonna be like number six. All right, so I'm doing number six, which means I'm going to my graphing, well, first of all, I'm gonna look at this. I'm gonna realize that I can't group it and I can't factor it. I don't know how to do it. I'm just a human. So I'm gonna to go to my graphing calculator and we'll do this again in class and because it's gonna be hard for you to see. But you're gonna to go to y equals and you're gonna go plug it in. I know you can't really see that, but you should take a look on your calculator. Uh, then we're gonna graph it and we're gonna press second trace. And that's gonna get us the zero function, number two. We're gonna go find a zero or a solution. All right, so I get to pick from, it looks like it has four different solutions. It's crossing the x axis at four different places. So I wanna find one that looks like an integer. And I think I found it right over here, just to the right of the x-axis. Again, we'll do it in class, but you can see it on your graphing calculator. There should be one just to the right of the x-axis. So it looks like it's gonna be an integer. I'm actually hoping it looks like number one. So I'm gonna go a little left of it and press left bound, go a little right of it for right bound, and then I'm gonna go take my guess, and I get my answer to be one, zero. So this is one of my solutions, it's one, zero. And now in my head, I'm thinking, is one, a factor of 12 divided by a factor of three. Yeah, it's one over one. So one is definitely a possible factor. So once I realize that one's a factor, I'm gonna go ahead and do synthetic division. So one's gonna go in the box. And what am I gonna divide it into? I'm gonna divide it into three x to the fourth minus two x cubed minus 37 x squared plus 24, plus 12. Remember, it's the coefficients. 3x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 37x squared plus 24 plus 12. Skip a line and draw an equals bar. Bring the three down. One times three is three. Add it up. One times one is one. Add it up. One times negative 36 is negative 36. Add it up. 1 times negative 12 is negative 12, add it up, and we get 0 as our remainder, which is a good thing. We might have actually skipped the remainder theorem in the earlier sections. When 0 is our remainder, that means that this number is definitely a solution. All right, so now I have, this was 3x to the fourth. I have an equation that says 3x cubed plus x squared minus 36x minus 12. Remember that when I start with 3x to the fourth and I use synthetic division, my answer is going to have an exponent that's one less. So 3x cubed 
plus x squared minus 36x minus 12. Now, you can try to factor. I'm going to try to factor. Or you can go back to your graphing calculator and see if there is another easy to find zero, like a two or a negative two. And I don't actually think that there is. So I'm gonna try to group. Underline, double underline. What do these two have in common? X squared. What's left over? Three X plus one. What do these have in common? Negative 12. What's left over? Three X plus one. What do these two have in common? Three X plus one. What's left over? x squared minus 12. So I grouped it, it is groupable, it is factorable, and I'm now down to here. And from here, I'm gonna split it up. I'm gonna do that on another whiteboard. I'm gonna split it up and I'm gonna solve for my final x's, all right? So I already know that one solution is one, and I have some more that I need to find out. So you can finish writing this down, and I'm gonna start from this line right here. So, Starting from 3x, the quantity of 3x plus 1 times the quantity of x squared minus 12, I'm going to solve them. Well, this one, this is pretty easy to solve. Top, bottom, change the sign. So negative 1 over 3. And you could probably find that on your graphing calculator now, negative 1 third. This one's a little harder to solve. I'm going to use algebra for that. So x squared equals 12. And that means that x equals plus or minus the square root of 12. And of course, we have to split 12 up. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 12? It's 4. So 4 and 3. So what's the square root of 4? 2. 2 rad 3. So I have one solution here. Oopsies. Sorry about that. I have two solutions here. And I also had my first solution that I found with my graphing calculator, which is 1. Now let's write them nice and neatly. So I have 1, negative 1 third, and plus or minus 2 rad 3. And those are my answers, okay? 1, negative 1 third, plus or minus 2 rad 3. All right, let's recap, because this was a lot of math and it probably sounded crazy. Uh, sorry, some of this got um, whited out. But try to factor. We couldn't factor the original equation. So I went to my graphing calculator, I plugged it in, and I used second trace zero to find me a nice solution of one. For when I found one, I went over and I used synthetic division to put it into the original question. What I got out as my answer had a remainder of zero, which means one actually did work. And what was left over was groupable. So I thought about what these two had in common and what was left over, what these have in common, what's left over what these have in common, what's left over. And then I went ahead and I solved it, either using my trick of top, bottom, change the sign, or using algebra, and then remembering my perfect squares. And then you make a nice list. Your answer is one, negative one third, and then plus or minus two rad three. Four answers for a question that has x to the fourth power. So that was everything for number six. You go back and do number five. It is going to be easier. Believe in yourself. You can do it. Um, but definitely try it my way using synthetic division and factoring if possible. All right. Good luck.